This is a practice exercise from page 311 of the textbook. We're learning how to draw resonance structures for the formate ion. So first thing we we'll want to do when we find any Lewis structure is we want to figure out how many electrons we have to work with. So we figure out how many valence electrons each atom brings. So for hydrogen, I know that it's in group 1, so it brings 1 valence electron. I know carbon's in group 4, so it brings 4 valence electrons. There are two oxygen atoms, which each bring six valence electrons. And then that negative charge means that there's one extra electron. So if I add these all up, I've got a total of 18 valence electrons to work with in this structure. So the first thing I want to draw is my skeleton with all single bonds. Now if I look at the formula, usually the first atom is the central atom. In this case, the first atom is hydrogen. And I know that hydrogen can't be the central atom because hydrogen only forms one bond. It's okay with only having two electrons around it, and it can't bond with anything else then. So carbon is going to be my center atom. I know that the hydrogen is going to be attached to the carbon, and then the oxygens are going to be attached to the carbon. So looking at my skeleton, I've used two, four, six electrons to make my skeleton, which means I have 12 left. So again, I've used six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So remember, when we make Lewis structures, we draw the skeleton first, and then we use the remaining electrons to fill the octets of the atoms around the outside. And if I check, I can see that the octet for this oxygen is filled because it's got two, four, six electrons in non-bonding pairs and two more in the bond, so a total of eight here. This oxygen is bonded the same way, two, four, six in non-bonding pairs, two shared, so a total of eight. This hydrogen is fine with only two, but if I look at the carbon in the center, it's only got two, four, six electrons. So that carbon needs to have two more electrons, and the way to get that is to make one of the oxygen atoms share their electrons. So instead of keeping a pair of electrons for itself as a non-bonding pair, it needs to share that with the carbon. But the question is, which oxygen do I do that from? Do I do it from the bottom oxygen or the right oxygen? And the answer is that I can actually do it with either one. So the fact that I can do it with either one means there are two different ways to draw this structure. So, so the first way is going to involve removing a pair of electrons that are non-bonding electrons on the rightmost oxygen and turning those non-bonding electrons into a bonding pair of electrons. So you can see that I've got one double bond there, and now my octet is still full for the oxygen because it's got two, four, six, eight, and it's full for the carbon because we've got two, four, six, eight, and we haven't changed it for the other oxygen, two, four, six, eight. So since that is a good Lewis structure now, I'm going to go ahead and put that in brackets with the charge on the outside. And then I'm going to draw the next resonant structure, and the next resonant structure is going to look very similar, again in brackets, but now I'm just going to make the double bond to the bottommost oxygen and rearrange the electrons accordingly. So because these are resonant structures, we want to put that double-headed arrow in between them to show that both of those are acceptable structures, and the actual true structure is an average of both of those. So if I focus on the bonding, let's say between the bottom oxygen and the carbon, I can see that in one resonant structure it's a single bond. So it's got a bond order of 1, and in one structure it's a double bond. So a bond order of 2. Well, the real structure is an average of these two structures, and if I add 1 plus 2, I get 3, and if I divide that by 2, I get the average is actually a 1.5 bond. So what is going to be true about this bond here is that it's not going to be as long as a single bond, it's not going to be as short as a double bond, it's actually going to be between those two, it's going to be an average of those two bonds. So remember that neither of these is the true structure of the molecule, the true structure is an average of both structures. So we would average a 1.5 bond here, and average a 1.5 bond here. The single bond between the carbon and hydrogen is pretty set because that doesn't change from resonance structure to resonance structure. So again, when you draw these resonance structures, just do what you normally would in terms of drawing the Lewis structures, but when you're faced with a choice about where to move electrons around from, that's how you decide what your resonance structures are. One choice is one resonance structure, the second choice is the other resonance structure. If there's more choices, you may have more resonance structures. Then just remember that the true structure of the compound is not any single one of the resonance structures, it's a combination of both.